enzyme and its job is to snap crayons. Well, what's going to happen is that the enzyme is going to bind to your crayon. It's going to snap it. Now, at the point of snapping, it's really, really hard to snap a crayon slowly. And that's because you reach this like transition state. You reach this point at which this crayon is being broken and there's like no capturing that moment. There's no stopping it. Um, basically, this is your transition state. This is the point in an enzyme catalyzed reaction when you have your substrate actually being forming, making the product, like actually at this moment. We can't like isolate it. We can't capture it because it's so fleeting. It's shorter than like a bond vibration. But that's your transition state is when that substrate is real is like halfway broken. Basically, we have partial bonds being formed, we have partial bonds being broken. That's your transition state, which we indicate with the double dagger. Now, remember that an enzyme can't make anything happen that couldn't actually happen just it would just be really, really unlikely without an enzyme. So theoretically, we wait long enough, we have enough energy, all of the random stuff comes together and this crayon like snaps in half. That would still go through a transition state. The crayon would still go through a transition state, but now it wouldn't have an enzyme helping things out. Now, so the enzyme, the way it's able to help things out is by kind of like forming favorable interactions with, with the crayon as it's being broken or with your substrate as it's being turned into product. When you form favorable interactions, remember our enthalpy component in that whole like Gibbs free energy stuff? Basically, we make favorable interactions, we're going to lower our free energy. If we lower our free energy what of that really, really uncomfy point at the point at which it's breaking, well, that's going to make it easier to happen. And so if we were to go when we were to plot things out, if we didn't have an enzyme, if that crayon just has to be breaking by itself into that product, well, it has to go through that sub it has to go through that transition state. Your crayon is always going to have to go through that point at which it's like halfway broken if it's going to become all the way broken. But the energy of that point is going to be a lot lower if you have an enzyme that can counterbalance the actual uncomfiness. So from the crayon's perspective, it's still going to be really, really, really uncomfy to be in that transition state, to be in that halfway broken state. It's still going to be really unstable. But you can offset that, that high energy of your actual transition state of that substrate partway broken by compensating for it by providing those favorable interactions that are going to counterbalance that and lower the activation barrier. So the activation barrier, this is what's going to determine how fast a reaction happens. It's going to be the difference in between like getting our having our crayon be just our substrate and having that crayon be partway broken. And that's going to be our activation barrier is going to be kind of changing the substrate into the product. And this is considering like a super simple scenario. Sometimes enzymes will have like multi steps and things will be more complicated. But basically the largest change in free energy, that's going to be what's going to be the rate determining step. That's going to be what's going to be the slowest. And if we want to make that energy that difference lower, well, we do that by forming favorable interactions to the transition state. And it's important that you recognize that this is the favorable interactions need to be most favorable to the transition state. What would happen if we formed favorable interactions to the substrate before it was being broken? If we tell this crayon, I love you just the way you are, don't change anything. We hug it really, really tight. Well, then that crayon's gonna kind of like get comfy as it is, and why should it go through that uncomfy breaking point if there's nothing better for it in, in it for it? But if we kind of instead have the enzyme kind of just like loosely bind to the substrate, oopsie, well, we don't want it bound like that. We have it kind of loosely bound to the substrate. It still has to kind of like fit in shape wise and stuff, but not lock and key method because we don't want it to kind of bind too tightly. So instead, what we have is a sort of induced fit. We offer the cram a little bribe, like, yeah, we'll give you some favorable interactions in the beginning. But then if you want those really, really tight hugs, you're going to have to get to that uncomfy spot. And then when you're at that really, really uncomfy spot, we're going to hug you the tightest. We're going to offset that pain the most, and then we'll let you go. So if we look at a reaction coordinate diagram, basically we can have our enzyme and our substrate be separate. So we have our hand and we have our crayon and they're not hanging out yet. Then they bind. We form this enzyme substrate complex, which you can represent with a dot or with just drawing these next to one another. So just like ES without the plus sign.
Now what's going to happen is we kind of see we get this dip in the free energy. Because we're forming those favorable interactions, we're getting that enthalpic gain, we're getting a little of those warm and fuzzies, we're going to lower our energy. But if we give it too much warm and fuzzies, that's like we're holding the crayon too tight as it is. We're telling it it likes it so much tight as it is. It likes it at just as it is. Don't change anything. And so what's going to happen is that you're going to make this more stable. You're going to start lowering this. If you had it be super duper stable, well, now what's going to be happening is you're digging yourself a really, really, really big hole. If we're saying that in order to actually get to the products, we got to go through this transition state. And so if we lower this too much, well, now we're going to dig ourselves into trouble. How can we get, our, get ourselves out of trouble more easily? I mean, we still want to bind to the substrate, um, but remember, like, what is it that's really going to determine the biggest thing that's going to determine our free our energy difference? So not the overall free energy difference. The enzyme can't change that, the difference between the substrate and the product, but the activation barrier. What's going to change that activation barrier the most? Well, that's going to be the activation energy to get to that, to that transition state, to the partway broken crayon. And so that's what the enzyme is going to need to be able to like counterbalance is going to compensate. So basically, if we didn't have an enzyme present, getting to that transition state is going to be super duper 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 hard. But basically, with the enzyme, this part, this delta G E S double dagger, this is telling us that this is kind of the offset that the enzyme is giving us. This is the offset we're getting between having them bound and having them not bound. And so this binding, this is where the binding energy is going to come in. This is where we get our binding energy. All those interactions between the enzyme and the transition state, that's what's really going to be driving the force of catalysis. How much faster the reaction can go in the presence of an enzyme is going to be determined by how much the enzyme is able to stabilize that transition state. And so then once you get over that transition state, then kind of like at equilibrium, the amounts that you would get of your enzyme in your substrate versus your enzyme in your product, well, that's going to be the same whether or not it's catalyzed. That's not going to, the enzyme can't change that overall delta G. But if it can make it faster to get to the other side, um, basically, then it's able to make the reaction go faster. And often, like in biochemistry, we're not letting reactions go to equilibrium in our body. We might do that in the lab. But basically, the speed of a reaction is going to end up being really, really important to determine like whether reactions happen or not, as well as be able to drive like whole pathways, as we'll see when we talk about metabolism. But the basic idea is that you want to bind that transition tight really tightly, the transition state really tightly, that's going to be the most favorable. You don't want to bind your substrate too tightly because then you're going to dig yourself in a hole. Instead, instead of that lock and key, what you want is that induced fit. You bind kind of loosely, then you, but, but the most favorable interactions are going to be in that transition state. And so if you want the tightest interactions, then their substrate's going to have to like contort itself and to get to that transition state. Once you're at that transition state, then you can fall either way. But the shorter it is, this activation barrier is, then the easier it will be to get back over it if you go back and form your reactants. And if you use your product before you have time to go backwards, well, all's good. Especially if you have a big difference in your delta G, your products have a lot lower energy than your reactants. Well, now what's going to happen is that it's really, really unlikely that this crayon is just going to piece itself back together. So bottom line is binding to the transition state is going to be really, really important. And often like drug manufacturers and stuff will want to kind of like design inhibitors that will match that transition state. Problem is that that transition state is super duper fleeting. We can't even capture it. Um, and so you kind of have to guess what it would look like based on knowing what the pre is and the post is. And somewhere in between those two, you had to have something that was halfway in between those two. So that's the basics of crayon snapping. That is enzyme catalysis and the free energy diagrams and all that stuff when it comes to them. So yeah, now my hands are purple. <laughs>